Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So we are days, almost a matter of hours away from the end of 2019. So I've been kind of putting this off because I've been reading some really great books lately and I wanted to make sure that I get in all of my favorites of 2019. So I thought about coming up with 19 of them and I just kind of started gathering books and I've got like 15. So I'm going to go through I think about 10 of them that have kind of stuck with me throughout the year that I continually um, recommend to people that I would love to just I want to talk to people about them and then I have my like top five I have made myself forced myself to pick my favorites it wasn't easy but I have my top five so this first group isn't in any particular order they're just really good books right now the first one is not making my top five because technically I haven't finished it yet. I have about 150 pages left in it, but for sure is going to be in my favorites of 2019 because it's Colleen Hoover. So I picked up Regretting You yesterday. I am, like I said, about 200 pages into it. I'm loving it. I am loving Clara and her mom. What's her name? Morgan. Um, their relationship. It is very much focused around this mother-daughter relationship and how they are trying to get through this really, really horrific, tragic thing that happened to them. Um, and I'm in the midst of it. And I don't want to put it down. It's fantastic. It has potential that it could make my top five, but like I said, it's kind of not fair because I haven't finished it yet. Um, the next one, we're just going to kind of go with um, some more recent reads. So The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. I finished right before Christmas and I loved this book. This is a Christmas Carol retelling. So we have Holly Chase who was visited by three spirits um, and chose to not change her Scrooge-ish ways and ended up dying an early death and then became the, the um, ghost of Christmas past. So she's been in that role for a few years, trying to help other Scrooges kind of change their ways. Um, and so we kind of follow the one Christmas and helping a specific Scrooge. It was really sweet. It's YA. I love it. I'm. This is something that will be a reread around Christmas time because it's just, it was that cute. It was really that good. Another recent read that I had is The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. This is like... I don't even know how to describe it. It's mysterious. It's not suspenseful. It's not really scary, but it's just, I kept saying it was weird. It's just weird. I don't even know. So there's this family and they're pretty well off. They live in a mansion and we're seeing things happen from the children's perspective. And so all of a sudden some other people are invited to live in the house with them and they kind of start creating this little cult where the kids aren't allowed outside anymore they're not allowed to have shoes anymore it's very strange and but so good so good i don't i wish i had better words to describe that one so now we have both we have this one and snickers hiding up there so Let's see, let's see how this goes. All right, next one is one that <clears throat> I just can't stop thinking about this year. This is The Home for Unwanted Girls by Joanna Goodman. I buddy read this um, with Krista from Books and Jams and with Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand. Pretty sure all three of us did. I feel like that's right. Um, but I can't stop talking about it. So this takes place in Canada where um, there's an orphanage that, or there are orphanages that due to some loopholes within the political system, they are changed over to um, insane asylums. So these poor orphans are now kept in an insane asylum and it's not good. Um, and it really happens. So it's based on true events and I believe there's some dual time perspective in this one, is there? I can't remember. But it's stuck with me, it still stays with me. It just, so good. So good. So I want to read more by her, Joanna Goodman. I gotta find some more books because it was just written really well. Another one that I can't stop thinking about this year was The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. A little short book but packed a punch. I mean it was just a contemporary kind of drama that took place in Alaska 
but I literally read this book in a day. I did not move from my chair or barely moved from my chair um, and just finished this book in no time. So it follows four friends. They kind of all have a connection to each other. Um, Ruth wants to be remembered. Dora wishes she was invisible. Alice can't bring herself to leave and Hank is running away. They all live in Alaska on the cold edge of America where each one must find the strength, courage, and heart to survive. It's just so good. It's so good. Um, another historical fiction for you, I have a few of them on my list, is Pam Genoff and the Lost Girls of Paris. This, of course, is a World War II historical fiction, takes place in France during the war. So we have a group of women who were trained to be spies, um, who were sent behind en enemy lines within France. And there's a specific little special network that they were a part of and kind of how they communicated with each other, how they were trained, what happened. Um, and it starts off actually, it's dual time perspectives, but the times are pretty close to each other. So it's like 1946 and like early 1940s. But um, there's a woman who is going through Grand Central Station and finds this abandoned suitcase. Um, and inside the suitcase are pictures of a bunch of girls. Um, and that kind of sets off this kind of mystery as to figuring out who are these girls and what happened to them and where are they and can kind of get from the title they're the lost girls of paris but it was fantastic it makes me want to read more of pam jenoff's work all right that was my last oh not my last historical fiction but this one's more ya historical fiction this is what I'm gonna make my kids read for sure. So it was Refugee by Ellen Gratz, another one that really stuck with me. Really, really well written. Um, this follows three kids from three different time periods. So we have Joseph, who's a Jewish boy living in 1930s Nazi Germany, Isabel, who's a Cuban girl living um, in the 90s, and then uh, Mahmoud, who is a Syrian boy, um, and it says in 2015. So all three of them have to, uh, they all three become refugees. Um, they all three have to leave their homes. They all three have to go on these, this very scary journey. What's really interesting is there are certain parallels that kind of follow all three of them. So again, it makes you think, it makes me just question, are we doing enough? Just, oh, it just is a beautiful, beautiful book. All right, those are the historic fictions. Now let's get to some thrillers. Silent Patient by Alex McLeodes. Oh, I don't, I don't even know. If you figure out the twist of this book, it's probably not gonna be as high of a rating. I did not, obviously, and was just, whoa. So this follows a woman, her name is Alicia, and she is in a psych ward because she has been convicted of shooting her husband into the face like four or five times. And then once it was done, she went silent and has not spoken a word since then. So you have this new kind of psychotherapist, Theo, who's come to kind of like his kind of life goal is to help her. And so you have see this relationship, you kind of go back in time and figure out what things were like from her perspective. It was phenomenal. So good. So good. And a book of the month book that I actually got read. So that's even better. The next one I have, not shouldn't be a surprise, I feel like I've talked about this book enough this year, is The Night Sister by Jennifer McMahon. A um, little bit of an older book, but man, this creeped me out. Um more thriller-ish, not really psychological. Silent Patient, definitely psychological thriller. This is just plain thriller. Um, 1950s Tower Mortel. There's actually kind of three timelines we're working with here, the 1950s, 1980s, and then present day. We have five kind of main characters. We have um, two sisters from the 50s and then three, well, two sisters and a friend from the 80s and then present day. Kind of all centers around the Tower Motel and there's some mysterious piece to it. There's a bit of a um, paranormal haunting, some sort of monster involved. It's freaky, it's great. It's one of those that like I had to put it on the other side of the room one night. It was that good. All right, then my next one we have my Absolute Darling by Gabrielle Talent. And this is one where like, I almost feel bad for liking it so much. This follows Turtle who is grown up in a very not great situation. So 
Her dad is very abusive to her. Her mother has passed away. Um, her grandfather's around. Not that great of a support. Um, so she kind of finds solace exploring the woods of the Pacific Northwest, which is where she lives. Um, doing that one time, she does meet a boy from her class. They become a bit of a bit of French friendship develops there um, and kind of helps push her to give her the courage to basically stand up for herself. It is a really hard read, but a very, very well done book. Very good book. If you've read all the, all the, oh, what's the book? Something in Wonderful Things. I can't think of it, but if you've read that book, because that was hard to read too, it's kind of similar, like, just, ugh, it's hard to read, but it was fantastic. All right, so let's get to my top five. Um, some of these shouldn't be a surprise for you. My Kindle doesn't want to work, or my tablet doesn't want to work. Um, number five of the year, I'm going to go with Bird Box um, by, by Josh Mallerman. Um, pretty popular book out there. I was a little behind the bandwagon <laughs> with reading this one. Um, but this follows our main, uh, some sort of disaster has happened on Earth where this creature has come that if you lay your eyes on it, you either kill yourself or want to kill yourself or kill other people before you kill yourself. So people are forced to kind of stay indoors, cover all the windows. They can't go outside unless they're blindfolded. And it follows kind of this group of people trying to survive. I couldn't stop reading that book, even though it just was so creepy. My fourth favorite book of the year is The Huntress by Kate Quinn. World War II historical fiction, so not shouldn't be surprised that that's in my top five, but wow, such an interesting perspective. So this takes place after the war, and you follow, um, let's see, what are their names? Ian and Nina and Jordan. Um, so Ian's job is to really kind of hunt down Nazis, basically. So he is trying to find them post-war, bring them to trial, and kind of make them serve time for what they did. Um, but one of the people he is really seeking out is the Huntress, because she was either the wife or fiancé of one of, like, the most horrible people out there. She did some not good things, and he is really his whole life goal is to hunt her down. Um, so you live, you get perspectives from the Huntress herself, as well as from Ian, as well as there's some other characters involved that it's just glorious. It is glorious. It is a very unique perspective. It is written so well. Um, I felt like I was there with them. Oh my God, it was just so great. It was so great. I loved it. Which is why it's number four. Um, Number three, uh, I just finished. I read this in about three days. Um, not surprising it's in my top five. Um, definitely barely squeaked in. I'm kind of glad I waited to film this because it's The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetys. Oh, Ruta Sepetys, first of all, if you haven't read any of her books, what are you waiting for? She is a phenomenal writer. She does write young adult historical fiction, but anybody can appreciate the stories that she's telling. So this follows, um, our time period is the 1950s in Madrid, Spain, so we're post Spanish Civil War, but General Generalissimo, or General Francisco Franco is still the dictator of Spain. He's not a good man. So they're in a little bit of unrest, but he has recently opened up tourism to Americans to try to kind of help their economy a little bit. Um, so we have, we follow our main character who is um, Daniel. He comes from Texas. His parents are there trying to do some oil deals. Um, so he's there and he meets um, Anna, right? Yeah. Working at the hotel that he's working at and kind of sparks a friendship and sparks his curiosity into kind of figuring out what is the world like here not just what I'm seeing at the hotel and he is an aspiring aspiring photographer he kind of wants to get into journalism so his curiosity is very peaked and you follow and figure out what's happening and it is 
I was shocked. It is based on true events. I got sucked down a rabbit hole after reading this book. And this was like 1950, and it lasted into the 80s. Again, yeah, wonderful, wonderful book. Written really well. I flew through that book in, like I said, a few days. All right, my number two and number one could have easily been a tie, and I'm only going with the one over the other based on I continually talk about that book to other people when they're asking for something to read. But probably more so because this book that's number two of the year is a sequel to the first book, so that's probably why I'm not talking about it as much. But let's just get to it. Second best book of the year, Us Against You by Frederick Brockman, should not be a surprise. This is the sequel to Beartown. Beartown follows a hockey team that is basically the highlight of a town. Um, it's a small town, and they really depend on these kids on this hockey team to kind of, I don't know, bring camaraderie to it, bring life to this town. Um, unfortunately, something tragic happens in Beartown where the star hockey player um, rapes the daughter of the coach and things go from there. And this is kind of the follow up aftermath of what happens to Beartown, what happens to the town, what changes are made, whether they're welcome, whether they're not. But Frederick Bachman has a way with words that is just unbelievable. I actually need to go through this book and highlight and tag the things that I have called out in here because he just has a way with quotes. It's just, I have like little tags and little lines in here. It's just, it's just beautiful. It's awesome. Highly recommend Beartown and Us Against You. Anything Frederick Bachman writes is going to be an automatic buy for me from now on. Like, he's just so, it's so unique compared to a lot of other books that I read. I mean, number one book of the year is one that I read really, really early in the year. I think it was January or February. The kids had a couple snow days. So it was snowing while I read that. So it's probably what helped <laughs> this book even more. But I cannot stop talking about No Exit by Taylor Adams. Oh, this is just a wild ride. So this follows our main character. She is off at college. Not having the best relationship with her mom. Kind of ran away to go to college to kind of get away from her. And she finds out that her mom is really, really sick. Um, has cancer, like probably won't make it through the next few weeks. So she has to get home. But there is a horrible snowstorm going on. But she is determined she is going to go. So she leaves, she starts driving, and gets to the midst, the middle of this horrible storm, and, like, she just can't go any further. So she pulls off on a rest stop um, on the side of the highway, and there are, like, four, four other people there. And so she goes in and kind of, like, well, says hi, and just, is, she's going to wait it out. But she needs to get in touch with her mom and her sister and let them know that she's at least trying to get there, but wants to talk to her mom one last time if she possibly can. So she goes outside to try to get better reception and on her walk back to the rest stop, she walks a different way and goes by this van and notices that there is a girl in a cage in the back of the van. And it dawns on her that one of the four people inside has kidnapped this child, leaving her out in the freezing cold. She doesn't know who it is. She doesn't know what danger it is, but she knows she has to do something and she has no cell reception. You just, it doesn't stop from that moment on. It is crazy it is crazy and it is so good it's so good so that's my number one book of the year pick that up pick up any of these they're all fantastic yeah you won't be disappointed let me know down below what's been your favorite book of the year or kind of if you're like me what's in your top five or so i would love to chat about books otherwise i hope you had a really great reading year i can't wait to see what 2020 brings and we'll see you next time bye